Well, welcome to our evening prayer service for this Sunday. Uh, it is um, traditionally known as uh, Good Shepherd Sunday, so I will uh, read uh, some of the uh, readings that we would normally read at this on this Sunday. But I'll also be continuing to focus on the pilgrim uh, course on the Lord's Prayer. If you have a prayer book at home, uh, we begin on page 18. The hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most cheaply so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice, under the throne of the heavenly grace. And almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And, O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.
The psalm this evening is the 23rd psalm found on page 356. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He shall feed me in a green pasture and lead me forth beside the waters of comfort. He shall restore my soul and bring me forth in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou shalt prepare a table before me in the presence of them that trouble me. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely thy loving kindness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the sixth chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians, beginning to read at the thirteenth verse. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we say together on page 21 the words of the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the second lesson is written in the tenth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning to read at the first verse. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. 
All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On page 22, we say the Nunc Dimittis together. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And o Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Enlighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. And by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. So we continue in our series from Pilgrim on the Lord's Prayer. And this uh, Sunday, it is the theme of lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What are we asking God for in this last petition of the Lord's Prayer? The prayer to do God's will, to have sufficient food to eat, to forgive and be forgiven, appears straightforward, though, as we have seen, their meaning is profound. What is the human reality behind a plea for help in the face of temptation and evil? In all sorts of ways, we see evidence of progress in the world, the eradication of some diseases, the decrease of child poverty, better housing for the vast majority of citizens, and a quality of life our grandparents would never have dreamed possible. For all this we give thanks, but it is not the whole story. And I was thinking as I read that paragraph that even some of these things are really not anywhere near as, as good as they should be. And that's what this paragraph seems wants to say. Not everyone in the world shares equitably in the benefits of progress. There are vast inequalities of wealth, and life expectancy varies greatly, not only between nations, but even between areas of the same country or the same city. The Old Testament prophets rail against a world where dog eats dog, they condemn injustice of every kind. Amos, for example, rebukes corrupt corn traders who manipulate scales to defraud poor people and make easy money. We rejoice in human progress, but the Bible forces us to look deeper and sees a more complicated picture, a world in which all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us are vulnerable to temptation, to being economical with the truth, or sacrificing our principles when it suits us. When bad things happen, it is tempting to scapegoat, to pick on individuals or groups of people who can be blamed for our ills. It is easy to nurse resentment or allow jealousy to poison our relationships which may be why Jesus tells us to pray constantly for God's help and guidance. He recognizes the weaknesses behind our bravado. Jesus' words are not easy to translate. In some versions, they are rendered, lead us not into temptation. In others, save us from the time of trial. And yet others, save us from being tested. None of us likes being tested in case we are found wanting. It may be this idea lies behind Jesus' words. So Peter, in his first letter, talks about faith being tested by the difficulties life throws up, much in the way that gold is tested in the assayer's fire for its purity. However, Jesus' words are translated. They recognize our fundamental vulnerability and our need of God. Mercifully, as Paul reminds us, God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength, but with the testing will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. That said, Paul never glosses over the reality of evil in the world, nor should we. The 20th century, 21st century, may have seen extraordinary scientific, economic, and intellectual progress, but it also witnessed a larger number of people killed in conflict than in any other epoch. So really I should just stay the 20th century. <laughs> Thanks to the combined efforts of Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, and Mao Zedong, it is estimated that 188 million people were killed. We rightly pray, Lord, deliver us from evil. 
This is the background to the language of spiritual warfare, which we find in the New Testament and throughout Christian spiritual writing. Paul alerts us to the battle of ideas that goes on in every generation, the values and priorities of a society shape its life. And that ideological struggle is as real today as it was for the people who lived in Ephesus to whom he was writing 2,000 years ago. We may be vulnerable to temptation, but we are equally vulnerable to being manipulated or undermined, which is why we need God's protection. It is why Paul encourages the Ephesians not to be complacent, but actively to clothe themselves with God's own armor. The sort of fighting that Paul describes does not use guns or suicide bombers. God wants us to use different weapons, the sort that lead by example, that cajole and beckon, that persuade and inspire others to a better way of life. God's weapons are the belt of truth, the breastplate of justice, the shoes that risk the journey to forge peace, the great shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Christians are to be people of integrity as well as passion. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to clothe ourselves in your armor. Protect us from evil. Guide us in your ways. May we always walk towards the light, your light, your love. And Lord, we uh, pray again uh, for all those who are afflicted by the coronavirus around the world. We do pray especially for people in our parish who are currently ill with the COVID-19. We pray for your mercy, your healing mercy, your strength, your love, your light to be ever real and powerful in their lives. We thank you, Lord, for uh, doctors and nurses and hospital workers of all kinds and personal care workers and everybody uh, that are on the front lines of health care. Especially we pray for our own nurses and health care people. Keep them safe, Lord. Keep them strong. Give them support. Assist them in their work. Allow them to find rest and leisure and even laughter uh, when they escape the hospitals for a break. Pray for our politicians and for our public servants as they struggle to, to make wise decisions for our safety and for the ending of this pandemic. Continue to bless the work of vaccinations. And thank you for this gift and we, we pray that soon everyone will be able to be vaccinated. Well, I heard a lot this week about pregnant women who are getting sick with COVID. Be with them in particular and their families. And we pray for those who are gravely ill on ventilators in ICUs. Surround them with your presence, Lord. And we also take time to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us. Thank you for Easter victory over sin and evil and death. And thank you for all those times in our lives uh, this past week when we have experienced kindness and joy 
and laughter and love and generosity. Uh, thank you for those people we have encountered who are obviously dressed uh, in your armor. Thank you. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this night and forevermore. Amen.